Hello and welcome to St. Peter Mancroft Church here in the heart of Norwich. Every Wednesday at 1pm we ask you to pause and reflect with us on different aspects of our lives and of events going on in the world. A warm welcome to anyone here in the building and anyone joining us online on our YouTube channel. And if you are in the building, please feel free either to join me in sitting down or keep walking around the building and enjoying looking at this magnificent building. Usually these reflections are led by a member of our ministry team. However, they're all away at the moment on a conference, a clergy conference for all clergy in the Norwich Diocese at the Cathedral. Um, so I've been asked to do the reflection today. My name's Michael Winter and I'm the communications officer here. It's a role that I've only just started in some way, certainly as a staff member here, although I've been running all the comms for the last year. And when I was asked to do this reflection, I was asked to talk about this role and what it means. And that got me thinking, what is my role really about? What, what do I do? What's the point of it? I guess that's a question we ask ourselves with every role we do, almost on a daily basis. So that got me thinking about the different things that my role entails. In a world where there seems to be a greater importance on being online, having an online presence, my role does have quite a large online focus. There's the social media accounts to manage. We have a Twitter account, a Facebook page, not just for the church, but for our children's groups and for our Bancroft music recitals. We have an Instagram account and we have our YouTube channel. All of these need um, things, content, if we're using the online term, content created and posted and shared. And also they need to share what other people create, photos that people take of our building and their, their comments about their visit. I also have to update the website. And that's not just the church's own website, but making sure that various external websites which have information about the church are kept up to date and are relevant. Things like Google, TripAdvisor, the diocese website, all need to have the up-to-date service times and opening times on. But my job isn't just about the digital world. There are physical things that need to be created as well. There's the newsletter, a weekly newsletter, which I've just started editing. And there are posters, banners and flyers that all need to be designed, proofread, edited again, and then sent off to be printed. Part of my job also is about maintaining the, the brand image of the church. We have corporate guidelines about what fonts we can use for things, what colours, so that anything you look at and you see to do with the church immediately makes you think of this place. This includes the use of the church logo. And then there's an overarching theme to my role, which is making sure that all these elements triangulate, they match up and are uniform. So part of my communications role is very formal. It's about letting people know things that are happening, when the church is open, when there are services and events also sharing more serious stories and news items that need to be known, such as when the pandemic hit and the church needed to be closed, and other stories such as when 
what members of the royal family pass away, such as when we had His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh pass away earlier this year. But parts of my job are very creative. There's designing things. There's editing and creating videos. And I guess there's a kind of, some of those things overlap. You can think of it like a Venn diagram with formal bits over here, creative bits over here, and an overlap where some of the formal things can be done in a creative way. But as I was writing this all down, I thought I didn't want to reflect on me or my job. You don't want to know what I do. But it did get me thinking about the ways in which we communicate, why we communicate with each other, and how we communicate in all these different ways. When thinking about why we communicate, the first thing I thought of was about telling stories, sharing memories with one another, passing on advice or teachings, maybe like a teacher would at school. I have a two and a half year old daughter who is constantly developing her speech. Every day she's learning new words. And one of the things she loves doing is telling me about the things she's done in the day. I'm sure she will when I get home later this afternoon. She might tell me about a swing she went on in the park. It's the most exciting thing that she's done, something she really wants to share and communicate with me. So how we communicate is an interesting thing to think about. And as I was reflecting, I sort of peeled back more and more layers to this. There are oral ways we communicate through the use of sound. There's talking, so either that in person, face to face, you might do it over the phone, or as many of us got used to over the past year, on Zoom or other online video conferencing um, sites. Music has a great way of communicating with us. A composer and a, and a performer can make us feel things that they are feeling whilst they are in the music that they are making. And there are different audio cues that we hear that communicate different things. This week in the church we've been having our Heritage Open Day talks. And at the start of the week, we had a very interesting talk about bells and the bell ringing. And how the sound of bells would be used to signify different occasions and different events. They'd be used to tell the time. They'd be used to let us know when the market was open. When services were happening in church. And other many different special things that were happening. And some of you might also be familiar with the Greenwich Pips. But there are also visual ways we communicate. The sign language for anyone who finds hearing difficult. We also can use images. We often hear that a picture tells a thousand words. Early ways of communicating stories were done in cave paintings and carvings. And paintings that you see with their use of colour, the shapes used, and even sometimes their brush strokes can tell us something, not just about what the artist wants to portray, but something about the artist themselves. And we can also communicate through touch and smell, using all our senses. I always remember my dad and my uncle, when they'd have open up a new bottle of whiskey, smelling it and feeling that different experience that the whiskey maker had wanted you to feel. The peatiness, the different floral touches, 
each giving you a different story to the experience. However we communicate, it always feels like what you want to communicate is important, is special. Christians communicate with God in different ways. We pray, which is us talking to God and listening to God, thanking God, praising God, asking God for help, laying our burdens with God. And we also listen to scripture, which is listening to the word of God, God communicating us through teachings and stories. It's a real privilege for us to be able to communicate, not just with God, but with one another in different ways, sharing our ex collective experiences and stories. And I am very excited to have the privilege of telling the story of Mancroft in my role, telling people about future events, things that are coming up, such as our Gaia exhibition in October, looking at the past and our heritage through finding out about the history of this place and promoting the Heritage Open Day talks. But most importantly, I enjoy telling the stories of the characters and people, past and present, who make up the life of this community and have built up a Christian presence here in the heart of Norwich. So I wonder, as you go through the rest of your week, how you might think about communicating with one another and think about the different ways that you communicate. And so I end this short reflection communicating with God on behalf of us all in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the experiences, the stories, the memories that we have. Help us to delight in them to share them with others and with you in the many different ways that we can. We thank you for allowing us to be creative and for guiding us when our stories are hard to tell. We make this prayer through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me for this short reflection. <laughs>